Welcome to Knife Chats with Tobias, brought to you by the Cat Production Team. Now in this video, I'm going to make something out of an, a piece of elk antler. Uh, in the video, I will call that elk antler everything from bone to deer antler. Trust me, it is actually elk antler. Now what I'm going to be doing is making a gimlet style corkscrew um, using the worm off of an old waiter's friend. Now, uh, the problem is throughout the video, I refer to the worm as a corkscrew, which is what knife people always do. They refer to this part on a knife as a corkscrew, uh, but technically uh, in the world, especially in the world of uh, <laughs> corkscrew collectors, this is known as the worm. And there's a couple different varieties of worms that you'll find on a uh, corkscrew. Um, so bear in mind when you're watching the video that I kept calling the worm a corkscrew, which is very confusing because then I'm making a corkscrew out of a corkscrew. As for a gimlet style, that's basically a, uh, a, a fixed corkscrew with a crossbar handle. So basically a handle perpendicular to the worm. Man, I hate when this happens. Uh, have you ever started a project on a whim and everything was just falling in place and then right when you're ready to get it all done, it's like, boom, you can't finish. And that's what just happened. Um, I've had this piece of uh, elk antler laying around for the longest time trying to think, well, what could I do with this piece of elk antler? It's too small for a handle or anything. And I saw, um, I had this um, waiter's friend that I got in a, um, in a lot by, I, I bought like six or seven different things and this was one of the items in there. I wasn't really interested in this item, but it uh, had a very good corkscrew in it. Uh, very firm, very strong. And I thought, well, maybe now it's time I can do something with this. I can actually... Uh, turn this into a corkscrew and that's what I was going to do so I didn't know exactly how I was going to pop this out but it popped out real easy just hitting it a couple times with a corks uh, with a uh, screwdriver pried it open popped out the pin and I got it out no problem at all it's like man this is going really easy and then it's like how am I going to drill holes into the elk antler because elk antler is not the easiest thing to drill so um I actually just jammed this into a little spot in my workbench and it's like man that's nice and tight it's not moving at all and um, then I just hit it with the drill and then as soon as I drilled the first hole it's like oh man that's not in a good spot that's too close to the top you want to get a finger over there so I really need to move this down some so I screwed up there that wasn't a big deal because I figured well as soon as I fill in with marine pox marine epoxy I will take some of the um, elk antler dust mix it in with a little uh, um, crazy glue or something and just fill this in and then sand it off and you won't see it too badly and you know it's nothing uh, important it's not like I'm trying to do anything with it other than see if I could do it and so I ended up drilling another hole further down figuring I'll take care of that later um, and um, ended up using a uh, a drill bit uh, I think what was it uh, like seven something another 764 or something like that and uh, well it only went in one way and which is kind of good goes in there nice and tight but I couldn't get it to lay straight and it's like am I going to be able to drill a hole right and so I pushed it in, determined the distance and saw it. And it's like, yeah. And and the first thing I did was, if you can see right there, I marked the hole there. It's like, all right, that's where I got to drill the hole. And it's like, wait a minute, this is sitting crooked. I'm going to have to drill the hole kind of weird. I don't know if that's going to work or not. But then I set it in there and I looked inside the hole and I could actually see the line up. So I knew the approximate depth and then I saw where it was actually lining up and I put a little mark there and it's like, all right, I'm going to have to hand hold this while I drill and chances are I'll screw it up. But uh, lo and behold, this is just a piece of uh, uh, wire coat hanger. 
it fit perfectly, went right in. And now I can actually pin this corkscrew in place and it'll be a nice little corkscrew on a piece of elk antler. And uh, I was thinking, okay, the next thing I could also do is maybe I could drill a hole through this side and put a, uh, a bottle opener on this end. So that would be kind of cool. And I might still do that. But it was at this point that it's like, well, let's get some marine epoxy and get this in place and see how it's going to look. And uh, I don't have any marine epoxy. And um, <laughs> now, <laughs> considering what time it is, I can't go any further right now. So now I've got to wait a, another day to finish up a project that, uh, you know, I knew something had to go wrong and there it goes. No maroon epoxy, but I know it's doable. And I've got a lot of uh, corkscrew bits like this that I'm never going to use. And uh, I got a couple different pieces of uh, elk antler also small pieces like this that you know it's just a tip that um, are too small for knife handles so I can probably do this on more than just one occasion and I might be able to make a, a few bucks selling uh, elk antler corkscrews I don't know we'll see In any case I know the project will work but now to finish the first one and see how it comes out <sighs> aggravating So I should be saying don't try this at home, but I'm at home and I'm trying it. Um, so I got my corkscrew and I got my piece of antler here. And I, I did confirm, yeah, this is a piece of elk antler. I actually found the other part I was working with it with. And so you can see the hole. I lined up the uh, corkscrew hole pretty well. And I cut down my little piece of metal, uh, which is basically a piece of a coat hanger uh, so that it uh, will go through there and um, what I like to do is have that pin smaller than the whole uh, than the, the 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 thickness going across so that basically it hides inside um, I don't want it to ex be exposed at all I'm going to actually hide the pin inside the uh, antler so it's just the right size it, if you can see there I, I won't have it piercing either side when I'm all done right now feels like it does but it should be fine um, and what I'm going to do is uh, I was looking for a better epoxy but this is what I got I got uh, Devcon home five minute epoxy I got the resin and the uh, hardener Usually I use marine epoxy, but I wasn't able to find it real quick. And um, uh, I think that's because of the shortages going on. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in this hole here. And I've got some antler pieces there. And I'm going to mix up the epoxy, shove it into the hole, and then fill that in. And then I'm going to see how well I can do with the uh, corkscrew. I actually figure I don't need that strong of an epoxy for this um, because the pin is going to hold the the corkscrew in place and it doesn't matter if it wiggles a little bit but I have a feeling I'll be able to get it nice and tight in there so that's the plan uh, I'll be right back in a minute because trying to mix this with the camera going will be a total disaster and I do not need epoxy on my camera because it's my iPhone Okay, step one is more or less complete. I've got the uh, pin in place. I've got the epoxy drying. I've kind of filled in the hole as best I could for right now. If you can see there, got to be careful. I don't want to touch anything because this has got to dry for at least eight to ten minutes, supposedly, before the epoxy will completely fix. Uh, I don't know how well I'm going to be able to hide the pin after all. I'm not too concerned um, if you see the pin or not. Uh, I was hoping to be able to cover it up. Um, the important thing is, is most of that hole will be filled in, which is good. And uh, you can see the uh, way that is going to work. And then I'm going to have to just sand it down and see how well it looks. 
and then if that works all right I've got some more uh, stuff to fill in around let's use this I don't want to touch anything I can uh, add some more epoxy into the gap here and shove uh, uh, itty bitty well basically shavings of the uh, antler in around there to fill in the hole a little bit better but once this is dry the antler the uh, the corkscrew is not going to work man I even got a little of it on the very tip of the corkscrew there so I have to get it off of there too but uh, I think it's going to work all right uh, we'll see how well this epoxy dries I've never used it before uh, like I said I don't think I really need anything that strong because uh, the corkscrew is going to be held in place by the pen so it's not like the only thing that is preventing that corkscrew from coming loose is the epoxy the pen is really the important part um, if I can fill in around it it's more for aesthetic purposes than anything else uh, that corkscrew will definitely be able to pull up cork out of a wine bottle. In any case, uh, that's uh, step one. Uh, we'll see what it looks like after step two. Okay, so here we are closer to finished. Uh, what I did is I added some more antler dust and epoxy around where the pin was and up around the screw. You can still see definitely where the hole was. Um, I don't think I'll ever really be able to hide that completely. There's the other side over here. This side it's a little more recessed so you can't even see the pen but you can see where the hole was drilled. And this hole is also well you can still see a little bit around there. I might try and fill that in a little bit better but I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, you can definitely see it worse on the uh, on the video than you can in person and uh, it really doesn't hurt the functionality of it at all so I'm kind of happy with it especially for my first attempt at this and what I think I'm going to do next is uh, try and torch this a little bit and uh, see if it looks a little bit better and then I will probably give it uh, some kind of shellacking over it as you can see I've done quite a bit of sanding so a lot of the uh, the uh, what looks like uh, some kind of shellac is missing off of here from before so once I do that it'll look a whole lot better but first I'm going to try and torch it a little bit and see how that works and I'm not going to try for anything dramatic I just want to bring out a little bit of the grain we'll see how that goes okay no doubt this would work a whole lot better if I was using an actual propane torch instead of a Bic lighter. But all I've been doing is like so and hitting the bone for quite some time. Usually it takes about a minute or so for it to finally start getting somewhere. And you gotta keep the flame as blue as possible to keep the heat up on it. Uh, fortunately, I got a corkscrew to hold on to. Uh, so I don't have to actually be touching the antler um, but it is working a little bit and that's really all I was looking for is to get uh, bring out a little bit of the grain and get a little of the color torched and everything in there um, but if you hold it there long enough it actually does work and you can see um, like up here where you noticed a little bit of brown going on over there and you got a nice spot of brown here too this is just some soot that will wipe off, but some of it is definitely nicely colored now. And it, uh, if I had a propane torch, which I'll probably have to go ahead and invest in, uh, I would be able to do a, a whole lot better with it. Uh, but even with just a big lighter, I can get a little bit of uh, character added to that uh, antler. And then when I get this varnish, it's really going to look good. And yes, it is definitely hot where where I had the uh, big lighter going against it. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of happy with this. I think it looks pretty good. And uh, I will have to definitely do more work on this uh, in the future. But uh, it's just uh, a fun little thing to pass the time and play with. And uh, I think it's coming out pretty nice. Once I get a nice uh, coat of varnish on it, it'll be really nice. And I'll have a really nice... Um, 
uh, deer antler um, corkscrew. Thanks for dropping by Knife Chats with Tobias. Don't forget to give us that thumbs up, leave a comment below, and subscribe and ring that notification bell so you know when the next episode is up and online.